Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. September 24th, 2012. It was a Monday morning in the town of Stony Point, New York, and 39-year-old Tammy Palmer was returning from the bus stop, having walked her young children there so that they could travel to school. The bus stop was located at the end of her long driveway, and it was a typical school run, a regular morning like any other. But, unbeknown to Tammy, someone that she'd exchanged heated words with days prior was lurking nearby, monitoring her movements. Tammy couldn't have anticipated what was about to happen. The figure lurked in the trees close to her home, and without warning raised a shotgun. Tammy was shot at from the tree line, the gunman hitting her from afar. He made the decision to run up on her before proceeding to deliver a fatal shotgun blast to her chest. I can only imagine her dread, the gunman having hit her already and missed one of his shots, and the feeling of helplessness as she could only curl up in fear as he ran her down and shot her again. Thankfully, Tammy only had to endure that brief moment of agony, probably in a state of shock and bewilderment as to who had shot her. Her family and children on the other hand are now having to face her absence for the rest of their lives. It's unclear if Tammy's children witnessed or heard the gunfire, or were already on the school bus, not being present to see their mother get murdered. News quickly spread about the shooting. It was morning, but it still happened in broad daylight. Police got on the case in no time, and within a short space of time, a suspect was named. Eugene Palmer, Tammy's father-in-law and neighbour. Eugene was 73, and had lived in the town of Stony Point in Rockland County, New York, for most of his life. He knew the area well, and this presented challenges to the authorities, who speculated as to where he may have fled. With a little bit of background information and the events that had transpired in the months and days leading up to Tammy's murder, the suspect Eugene Palmer was looking more guilty by the hour. Adding to this guilt was the confession that Eugene had given shortly after the murder. Eugene had told all to his sister, but since he had yet to be taken into custody or convicted for this murder, this detail is still alleged. Many in the community were stunned by Eugene Palmer's actions. He was described as an auto racing enthusiast and he looked harmless. The initial confusion was just why would someone kill their daughter-in-law? And if he had indeed done this crime, then what was the motive? Information would arrive and come to light that would begin to explain this cold-blooded murder. There had been tension building between Eugene and Tammy over a period of time. Tammy was married to Eugene's son, John Palmer, but their marriage had been falling apart for a while, and Tammy was eager to divorce John. Eugene lived next door to the couple and owned the property in which they lived. It was theorised that Eugene felt some type of way about a threat of divorce voiced by Tammy, and this ultimately led to a growing feeling of anger in Eugene. Tammy was planning on suing for Eugene's land, and I can see how this would annoy most people, and she had filed for a restraining order against John, having alleged that he'd assaulted her in the past. The fact that Tammy had filed a restraining order against her husband would suggest that she was living by herself in the house owned by Eugene, as she was caring for her children. But this decision to stay at home would prove fatal. By this time, both John and Tammy were in separate relationships, and all of the threats had resulted in a major confrontation between Eugene and Tammy merely days before she was murdered. Unfortunately, the issues between the pair couldn't be resolved in a peaceful manner. We don't know if either side's egos were bruised or if damage to Eugene's pride pushed him over the edge, but it's entirely possible given Eugene's extreme reaction just days later. Now that investigators had a plausible motive for Tammy's murder, they needed to capture Eugene so that he could be held accountable for the murder and face punishment for the crime. He had left the crime scene immediately in his green Dodge Charger and his vehicle had been discovered, abandoned about 100 yards into Harriman State Park which sits close to the house. Eugene was a local, and he enjoyed the outdoors. Described as an experienced hunter and outdoorsman, this sounded like an ideal hideout location for him. He was very familiar with this specific state park, and law enforcement descended on the park in an effort to find him before anyone else was harmed. Wearing bulletproof vests and taking extreme precaution, they scoured the park for Palmer. Fortunately, the park was shut down for a short space of time, given the active threat which may or may not have been roaming the woods. Despite overhead assistance from heat-seeking technology and scent-tracking dogs, little traces, except for a scent to a campground near to his car, were found. Ultimately, 
The search turned up nothing substantial. Eugene wasn't found and neither were any personal items of his. And this lack of evidence exists to this very day, as Eugene wasn't found in Harriman State Park and continues to elude the FBI and local authorities to this very day. It has been just over 10 years since Tammy was murdered and her family deserve justice. Her children have been forced to grow up without a mother and in May 2019, Eugene Palmer was added to the FBI's top 10 most wanted list, as it was believed that he may have crossed state lines, heading north toward Canada. Earlier in July this year, he was removed from the list and replaced by Omar Alexander Cardenas. And I speculate that's because there's been little tips leading to an arrest. A bit like the Robert William Fisher case, I did a video on that case if you're interested. And speaking of the Robert William Fisher case, this entire situation eerily matches the way that that case played out. A man kills family before driving to a national park. Police are tipped off to the suspect car location and arrive to find it abandoned with no trace of the suspect. Could Eugene Palmer have planted the car at the national park as a distraction so that he could leave the state? Some believe this to be the case. In the 10 years that he's been missing, many have pondered the questions that come up in cases like this. The first one being, where exactly did Eugene Palmer go? And the second biggest question being, is Eugene Palmer even still alive? If he is still alive, he'd be in his 80s and he wasn't in the best of health when he initially went on the run. He had diabetes and heart problems. I doubt that his health would have improved given the stressful situation of having to elude the police day after day. Clarence Palmer, Eugene's other son, believes that his father is deceased and that his remains are somewhere in Harriman State Park. He even offered money to anyone who could help lead him to Eugene's body by using cadaver dogs. Searches of the state park have obviously taken place, but given the size of the area, anything could have been missed in those early searches. Eugene's son feels like his father died in the park, because of his poor health conditions, and some even believe that he committed suicide following Tammy's murder, but clearly, the authorities are sceptical about these theories, given this next update. One of the most recent updates to this manhunt came in August 2021. The FBI conducted a raid of Palmer's granddaughter's residence in Warwick, Orange County. They must have been following up on leads or suspected Palmer to have been hiding out there because they showed up heavily armed and prepared for a gunfight with plenty of law enforcement resources like an armoured truck. 40 agents surrounded the property and laid low in trees and bushes surrounding the home. Some agents had even snuck up onto the roof of the house for better positioning. Palmer's granddaughter and her children were handcuffed but freed when it was determined that Palmer wasn't at the residence. In response to the house raid, Palmer's granddaughter wasn't all that happy. She is quoted as saying, I have bruises all over my arms and now I'm scared to open my front door. They ripped my security cameras off my house and broke my kids trampoline. Like with any house raid for an FBI top 10 most wanted fugitive, most of the furniture in the granddaughter's home was ripped apart in search for clues to Palmer's whereabouts. I'm sure that it would have been a pretty stressful situation for her and her children. However, Palmer could still be out there and is considered armed and dangerous. If he had have been in the house, he might have taken the children or even her as hostages. He had killed his daughter-in-law after all, and so family wasn't off the table. Since relatives often become involved in aiding their on-the-run relatives, I think the FBI showing up the way they did was warranted. And speaking of family being involved, that was the case with Yasser Abdul Saeed from my last FBI Top 10 Most Wanted video. Be sure to check that out. As of earlier this year, Eugene was taken off the list, but the FBI is still working the case from behind the scenes, probably monitoring Eugene's relatives and following up on promising tips and leads. Eugene has relatives in Florida, and because of his health issues, they feel as though if his relatives are helping and supplying him, he'd be down there. At this time, Eugene Palmer could still be very much alive and living in a neighbourhood near you. The FBI surmised that Eugene now goes by a new name, which isn't surprising. Even though he was labelled as an experienced hunter and outdoorsman, what 83 year old wants to remain in the wilderness with health problems galore? He's probably lapsing up the sun somewhere in Florida. Since Eugene Palmer's body was never discovered in Harriman State Park, the 
theories that I mentioned earlier all sound promising and I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments section below. This has been the story of former FBI Top 10 Most Wanted Fugitive Eugene Palmer. As always, thank you for watching.